The best time to wear a striped sweater is all the time. The one with the collar, turtleneck, that's the kind. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom Kenny, and you are, well, I don't know who you are, but I know you're watching Talking Voices. Some of the characters I've voiced over the years are SpongeBob SquarePants. Ow. His snail Gary. The narrator who says two hours later. Patsy the Pirate on SpongeBob. Are you ready, kids? The narrator from the Powerpuff Girls. So, once again, the day is saved. Thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, I'm good. Here's the mail from the Powerpuff Girls. Hi, everyone. Remember me? I'm the mayor. And a whole mess of other ones. I, can't, I gotta look at my IMDb. Well, I started out doing stand-up comedy and uh, sketch comedy while I was still in high school. I was a... 16 year old uh, doing stand up comedy in nightclubs in my hometown of Syracuse, New York. So I started really early. My parents had no idea that I had this secret life going on. Uh, they found out eventually. That led to me moving to Boston, Massachusetts, being a stand up there, then moving to San Francisco and being a stand up there for many years and making a living as a stand up comedian. I liked stand up, but I didn't love it, love it. And I had always had this dream to be in animation voiceover. That was the stuff I loved. I loved cartoons, I loved animation. I read a lot about animation. I knew a lot about animation history. And guys like Mel Blanc and June Ferre and uh, Dawes Butler and all those old school guys that did those voices were idols of mine and much more influential to me as a person than stand-up comedians were. Somebody saw me at the improv in uh, Santa Monica, uh, it's now gone, and uh, that club isn't, isn't there anymore, but they saw me do stand-up there and came up and said, you know, you do a lot of characters in your stand-up show, have you ever thought about being in voiceover? And I said, yes, that's what I, funny you're asking me that, that that's really what I want to do, that's my dream job, you know? And they said, come on down, audition for some stuff. I'm ready! Yeah, I just auditioned for a bunch of stuff and wound up in some stuff. And then um, wound up on Nickelodeon's uh, Nicktoons early 90s series, Rocco's Modern Life, as Heifer, the sidekick to the main character, uh, who is based on my 13 year old nephew. At the, he was 13 at the time, and he was always, he always acted like he was gonna start laughing. He was always a little nervous and looking around. And uh, now he's like a 35 year old guy with kids. But uh, that, uh, you know, kind of one thing led to another, and that's kind of been how my whole career has been, just kind of do it. And one thing leads to another, to another, to another. I never had any strategy, and I never had any, like, five-year plan or any of that stuff that would probably be smart to have. <laughs> like, I don't envy anybody's career. Like, like, the biggest movie stars, I wouldn't change, I wouldn't trade places with them. So... I'm, I'm so, uh, yeah, I just feel really, really lucky and fortunate that I think I'm one of those very few people that wound up in the job that's exactly right for them. I think, I think that's kind of a rare, you know, super lucky happenstance. It's funny, like the way that the, the voiceover contract uh, works in, in SAG-AFTRA is that you get a uh, you get paid for up to three voices. So between one and three voices, they pay you the same amount. After the fourth voice, when you go to a fourth voice, you get a bump in pay. So it's good to be versatile and be able to uh, take your voice to a lot of different places because of course, uh, economics being the driver of everything, they would rather pay uh, one person to do three voices than pay three people three times to do one voice a piece. With something like Rocco's Modern Life, which had not been in production for a lot of years, uh, I definitely had to go back and watch 
episodes of it again. Yeah! <laughs> and figure out just where it was. And you, yeah, we have to do that a lot as voiceover actors. Well, they'll say, hey, remember that character you did last season is coming back, you know? And, and you go, okay, let me hear a little bit of him. No play it. And you go, okay, I know. Okay, thanks. You know, I, I wasn't 100% sure, you know, you want it to match. Uh, so it kind of it kind of gives you a little bit of palate cleanser, uh, reset button to to get your mind ar around what the character sounds like. And with Heifer and Rocco, uh, that was uh, for sure something that we needed to refamiliarize ourselves with. And but once you get in the booth and you start doing it, it's like a comfortable old slipper, you know. You, Carlos Els Rocky and uh, you know Charlie Adler, uh, you know my wife Jill Talley, uh, just just. Everybody just uh, Doug Lawrence is Filbert, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, just it was great. It was it was so fun to be doing those characters again. And the writing and the show s had so much of the 100% of the sensibility and the feel of the original series, except transposed to this century. That it was uh, it was a blast. I'll answer that question in part two right here on Talking Voices. I'm Tom Kenny. Hey, do me a favor. Please subscribe to Verite Entertainment on YouTube, will you?